now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, Monkey Shines. All right, people, make way. Police? About time you got here. Yes, sir. I'm looking for a Mr. McGinnis. That's me, McGinnis. I own the place. I'm Constable Andy Parker. I called you an hour ago, Parker. Yes, sir. What? They send one flatfoot down here? We got us a bona fide mystery on our hands here. Yes, sir. I guess they reckoned I could handle it. This is crazy. I'm trying to run a business here. Yes, sir. I pay my taxes and they pay your salary, Constable Parker. It's hard enough trying to make an honest buck bringing food into the city. When I get robbed blind, the cops ought to take it seriously. Sir, I don't know what you expected. Teams of detectives? My sergeant said some fruit had been stolen. Probably kids. Kids? Kids! Come here, Parker. I'll show you what these kids did. Tommy and me left this morning to make our rounds with a new shipment. Stops all over the city we was supposed to make. We get to our first drop-off. Everything's fine. We close up and drive six blocks. Six blocks. We open the truck and where we find? What? Nothing, that's what. I don't understand. Now you tell me, Constable Parker, how do these kids of yours get in and out of the truck while it was moving without me and Tommy hearing a thing and make off with 500 pounds of bananas? 500 pounds? You gonna get that team of detectives on this after all? Maybe I will, Mr. McGinnis. Maybe I will. Five hundred pounds... That's what he says. ...of bananas. The agents. I know what they tell me. Andy Parker, he don't make a lot of jokes. Not to his contact man, anyway. No, but he does blush easily. (laughs) That's something, I guess. He just takes his job serious. Well, he's a police officer and an agent of the Red Panda Spiro. Serious is probably the best way to take it. Sure, but sometimes it's too much. I don't think he even has a lady friend. A Spiro... Did he ask you to shill for him? What? Someone has to ask. Can't an old man meddle just a little? People who meddle with secret identities get their memories erased. Oh, that would make a second date awkward. Are you done, or should I break out the knockout gas? You don't think the Red Panda will like the banana caper so much? I'm just here to pick up the agent's report, Spiro. I don't try to predict what the boss is going to choose to be interested in. Ever. Oh, ho, ho. so it's like that. Spiro! You meant just to think that last part, maybe. Spiro, who do you think that Heroes Weekly just named the most dangerous girl in the world? Oh, message received. No meddling for Spiro today. Ever. Ever. Uh, it's one more report. Little Harry Kelly brought it in just before you got here. He ran 15 blocks so you would get it right away. Now that's a go-getter. You could learn a thing or two. Uh, it's nothing. Uh, some nightclub, the Jungle Club, was broken into. What'd they get? Uh, two cases of plastic... Uh, what does that say? Uh, novelty cups? Ah, novelty cups, uh, shaped like coconuts. Plastic coconuts? Thanks for the fruit salad, Spiro. The boss will be thrilled. Uh, Not without a little meddling, he won't. Spiro! Boss? Hey, boss? Now where's he gone? If he went out on patrol without me... Ah, squirrel. There you are. Here I are, all right. Where are you coming from? 
Well, seeing as I just stepped out of the pneumatic tube labeled downtown... One of these days, you're going to get as <laughs> sick of that line as I am. I doubt it. Come on, get the door to the crime lab, please. What's all that stuff? What are you up to? Who says I'm up to anything? There's a gleam in your eye and a spring in your step. I'm wearing night vision lenses and static shoes. And you smell vaguely of gunpowder. Now there's a solid clue. Get that light, would you? I will, if you'll tell me what's going on. There was a robbery, or at least a break-in. A private collection of rare ceramics. Where does a gunpowder come into it? That's how they got in. Three charges on the outside wall. I think they used plain old black powder with some kind of accelerant. Wait a minute. Somebody stealing priceless ceramics with bombs? That's what I said. Was anybody hurt? No, the display was locked up tight and the security guard was downstairs. By the time he got in, it was all over. Well, that's something. What did they get? Hard to say. It's going to be a few days before they can determine what's missing and what was just destroyed. It wasn't pretty. And with 30 sets of police boots tromping over what evidence was left... Why didn't you call me? I heard some traffic on the police band radio and thought I'd swing by. I didn't expect anything interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll let it slide this time. O'Malley threw the entire squad out of the room when he spotted me on the ceiling. (laughs) That man just loves to be seen with us, doesn't he? At least he was cooperative. He even let me take samples of some of the physical evidence. (laughs) Of course he was cooperative. Cops like a straight line, a nice simple case, not wackos who bring a pet bull to a china party. Oh, I could have used that line half an hour ago. Mm Mm-hmm. Next time, call me first. Mm. So, should I start pulling case files on bombers, burglars, or pottery enthusiasts? Let me guess. All of the above, then cross-reference. I can't imagine that's going to yield much, but we should probably try. I'm going to run a few tests on these fragments to see if I can determine the charge and means of detonation. What is that? It's a fragment of one of the bomb casings. No, I mean, what is that? Hard to say. It's awfully charred and twisted. Looks like it was brown. Something lightweight, certainly. Probably a plastic of some kind. Not really what you'd want for these purposes. Looks like there was a textured pattern here on the outside, almost like... Like a coconut? Yes, I suppose. Like a novelty cup shaped like a coconut? Kit, is there something you're trying to tell me? Why don't you ever leave me an opening like that when we're not working? When are we not working? Good point. So? Boss, can I interest you in 500 pounds of bananas? All right, you guys, let's go. I'm locking up here. And try to be on time tomorrow, huh? We got a lot of late deliveries to make up after today. Good night, Mr. McGinnis. Yeah, good night, Tommy. Let's go, huh? Yes, sir. All clear, boss. Let's hope getting out is as simple as getting in. If you say so. You don't want to spend all night trapped on a loading dock, do you? That's not Paris in the springtime, but these days a girl can't be too picky. Kit Baxter, behave yourself. (laughs) Yes, boss. I think this is the delivery truck from Constable Parker's report. Do the plate numbers match? Have you ever observed my having eerie truck divining abilities? No, but I'm not sure how often that would come up. And a simple yes would be fine. Fair enough. You take the inside. I'll take the doors and the roof. Hey, mind telling me what I'm looking for exactly? Fingerprints. Fingerprints? You think our banana burglar's prints are on file? I really don't. Then why? Just let me know if you find anything out of the ordinary. You do love being mysterious, don't you? I'd just rather not say this one out loud until I'm sure... Suit yourself. Leaping lizards! This can't be right! Find anything? Nothing that makes sense! 
There are dozens of prints in here, and I just started looking. But? But they're all wrong. They're too small for one thing, and they're all the wrong shape. And they're everywhere. I've got the same thing here on the roof. Left a few samples, and we'll be on our way. We're going? Do we know anything? We know a little. A large shipment of bananas stolen could be anything. Could be nothing. The manner in which they were stolen, interesting, but leads to no obvious conclusion. Except that it didn't happen that way at all, which is John Law's working theory. But you were right to suspect that the coconut bombs sounded like the beginning of a theme. And who commits crimes on a theme? A sick in the head wannabe supervillains. Just as you say. So, who's a loony and why are his prints so small? I don't know who's organizing this squirrel. But I know who his henchmen are. Wait! Red Panda! They're monkeys! Dozens and dozens of monkeys! Good girl. Ridiculous! It certainly is. And for someone to even consider such a ploy, those monkeys must be fantastically well trained. So what do we do now? That zookeeper you rescued from the genie, what was his name? Oh, that was last year. Oh, Walter Potts. Walter Potts owes us a favor. Like maybe telling us what kind of monkey left these prints? It'd give us a place to start at any rate. Looks like it's a trip to the zoo for the red panda and the flying squirrel. <laughs> Miss Davis! Miss Davis! What's going on in here? Oh, Mr. Potts, thank goodness you're back. All of the monkeys, every animal in the primate collections just started going mad. How long have they been like this? Nearly half an hour. They've been driving me absolutely frantic. Why didn't you tranquilize them? I didn't know where to begin. It started with the baboons and spread so quickly. They panicked all of the other monkeys. We didn't even have enough tranquilizer to go around. Why is this happening? Are they afraid of something? I can't say for certain. It, it sounds almost like... More like excitement than fear. But what can have them this excited? Cause this kind of madness. I honestly couldn't begin to guess. Guess! Guess! <laughs> oh, I play guessing games when the answer stands before you in the flesh. Who, who are you? And how did you get all these animals out of their cages? M- Mr. Potts, I-, I don't think those are our baboons. Don't be ridiculous, girl. Who else would have a dozen baboons besides a zoo? Someone who knows their real worth, Mr. Potts. <laughs> Someone who truly understands these poor misunderstood animals. As only a brother truly can. A brother? You're mad! Sister, you're not just whistling Dixie! Forward, my children! Free our caged brethren! More shoulders to the wheel! More hands making our great work light! More soldiers in the army of the mad monkey! You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Mr. Potts, anything you can tell us would help. You and your assistant are the only ones to have seen this fiend face to face. I told you, he, he was wearing a mask. A- and his face was painted bright red and blue like the markings of a mandrel. The markings of a how much? A large baboon species. I'm sorry, I don't have any to show you just now. They all seem to have left the building. Now, if you'll excuse me, the police will be here soon, and we still have dozens of animals to get back into their enclosures. Fascinating. You say not all of the animals left with this so-called mad monkey. Please, you have to go now. Hey, hey, Mr. Potts, do you like impressions? Here's one of my favorites. Ooh, save me, flying squirrel. Ooh, help me, and I'll give you anything you want. Go on. Guess who that was? The genie had a gun to my head. And then he didn't, which brings us here. You were just about to tell us about the monkeys. <sighs> yes, this this madman had a dozen trained animals, all various baboon species. On his command, they opened all the cages, but only the zoo's baboons followed them. 
The apes simply ignored them, and the smaller monkeys ran in terror. I don't think I understand the difference. Apes are larger animals, considerably more advanced. The chimpanzee, the gorilla, and so on. Okay. And other species that are native to South America, like these squirrel monkeys, we've returned to their pen. Squirrel monkeys, huh? They are of a much smaller stature and have prehensile tails, meaning that they can use them as a fifth appendage. Handy. Hey, maybe I should get me one of those. Careful. This species has quite a pungent scent gland that they release when alarmed. Maybe we should get you one of those, too. Wise guy. Mr. Potts, I'm more interested in the behavior of these animals. You say the mad monkey had them trained. Yes, to open up all of the cages. It's a fairly specific piece of training, particularly as they'd never been here before. Kind of like robbing a truck or throwing coconut bombs. What? Skip it. You say they were all baboons? Yes, Several species, all native to Africa. And of all of the animals set free, only the other baboons left with them? That's right. Twenty-six animals in all. If there's anything you can do to recover them... We'll do what we can, sir. One more question. Did the zoo's animals appear confused or reluctant to follow? Why, no. Come to think of it, they... They behaved exactly like the rest. What, exactly like the trained monkeys? Yes. Some... Some of them even helped to open the other cages. The baboons had been profoundly excited for half an hour before the attack. They had all of the other species upset with their screaming. But once they were free, they became quite peaceful. Focused, even. Thank you, Mr. Potts. You've been most helpful. Hmm? Oh, yes. Best of luck to you both. Well, boss? Trained monkeys. No one could train animals to do these things. Then what? Mind control. A very primitive form of mental projection, not unlike hypnosis, but unrefined. The mad monkey's mind must be perfectly in tune with the mental frequencies of the baboon. Mental control of baboons? Isn't that a little... Specific? Now you're being generous. I agree. It's hard to believe. But it's the only possible answer. And he must have nearly 40 minions now. A small army. Come on, squirrel. There's no time to lose. <laughs> yes, my brothers. Take all you can carry back to our lair. <laughs> Sentinel Morning Edition. Mad Monkey goes on bombing raid in Chinatown. Yes, and again. Now on to pillage. <laughs> Squirrel? Squirrel, are you here? In the crime lab, boss. Kit, I think I know who this mad monkey really is. Well, that's the second best news I've heard all day. Let's have it. I remembered reading something in the archives at the Club Macaw. A guest lecturer who spoke there more than five years ago, when I was still in the Orient... Anton Cresswell, a former representative for a trading company dealing in Africa. His plane went down, leaving Cresswell as the only survivor. For six years before he was discovered, he lived among the baboons of the savannah. He claimed to have developed the ability to communicate with them. Why don't I remember hearing about this? He was quite the cause celeb for a brief time. But a month into his speaking tour, they found that orphaned English lord who could speak to apes, and then that boy in India who was raised by wolves. Mm, Lost in the shuffle of wild men, huh? That's more or less it. Anton Cresswell was quickly forgotten. A few months later, he dropped off the map entirely, which is right about the time of the earliest reports of baboons missing from zoos and private collections around North America. Nice work, boss. Sadly, it doesn't give us a clue as to where he'll strike next. I may have a lead on that. You do? What do you think I was doing in the crime lab? Tidying? Rinsing out a few things? I fully retract any note of surprise my tone might have implied. Thank you. Mm. I broke down the jobs the mad monkeys pulled. 
Most have been fruit markets, food terminals. Those are supply raids for his troops, and there's too many of them to defend. Granted. And the zoo job. There he was expanding his army. And we know last night he stole a giant monkey-shaped hot air balloon used in parades. Probably for the usual no good reason. Very likely. These other two jobs stick out. The ceramics collection and the temple in Chinatown. Both were so badly damaged by coconut bombs that we're still not sure if anything was stolen or not. Right. But look what I found on the list of the ceramics in the collection. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Three large ceramic monkeys. Hmm, not particularly valuable. Unless you're a nut job who talks to baboons. Point taken. And the temple? In addition to the much more valuable relics the police are actually looking for, there was, where is it, a large monkey fashioned of bronze depicting a traditional figure from a fable. The eponymous theme. Will they never learn? You don't happen to have a solid gold chimp in the family vault we can use as bait, do you? I don't think we'll need one. Boss? There's an exhibit of finely crafted oriental jade opening at the museum. Very rare, very valuable pieces, including, I believe, six nearly identical carved monkeys, worth nearly fifty thousand dollars. Why would a person have that information at their disposal? A catalog of the exhibit was included with my invitation to the gala opening. Hmm. Mine must have gotten lost in the mail. This is good work, Squirrel. Now that we have a pattern established, this mad monkey will finally come face to face. With the red panda. Patience, my pretties. Patience. The museum roof really is the best place for this. Keep things simple. No police. Yes, yes. If he's not here in another ten minutes, we'll break down the door and see what response that gets. Ah, at last. Hold it right there. Hold it. I've been waiting for an hour. Sorry, monkey. You wouldn't believe the traffic on the rooftops at this time of day. Oh, nice landing. And while we're at it, hubba hubba, you sly fox. She's a knockout. Keep your eyes in their sockets, you sinister simian. Great. Someone finally notices, and his nickname is Mad. Your campaign of crime ends here. You think so? Do you? You know you're surrounded by monkeys. Yes, cute little harmless monkeys. With razor sharp teeth an inch long. I'll take my chances. Oh, did I forget to mention the monkeys have guns? <laughs> my bad. <laughs> uh, boss, do you think those monkeys can shoot straight? How straight do they have to shoot? There are forty of them. Good point. Now we can chat. I have nothing to say to you, Cresswell. No, 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 no! We don't just throw real names around like we're chums from the office. I am the Mad Monkey. Or in a pinch, the monkey. Or variations on the theme, like Sinister Simeon before. I like that very much. <laughs> but don't you see? You really are Anton Cresswell. This whole monkey charade has only been a dream. Just a dream. Yeah. Just a dream. Just... Just kidding! <laughs> what the heck? I wasn't sure it'd work on you, Red Panda. They say you're awfully good. But I've been to every hypnotist I could find in an effort to lose my gifts. But not one of them could put me under either. My hypnotic powers must be thwarted by whatever innate mind control Cresswell exerts over these animals. Call me Cresswell again and I'll shoot the girl. That got your attention, didn't it? We don't really need her anymore, Red Panda. We have each other. Paws off, ugly. I saw him first. And if only it were as simple as mind control, I could have walked away. Started a new life after the lecture circuit threw me away. But you see, I hear them all the time in my mind. So full of anger, rage at their captivity. I become the nexus of the hive. I give them focus, civilize them. Give them guns and bombs. But we can never escape their 
baser instincts. It's not me, it's the monkeys. Oh, the judge will love this. There isn't going to be a judge, little girl. You should really let us shoot her now. Sidekick, how blasé. But I suppose you did the best you could without me. What are you talking about? I got to hand it to you, Red Panda. You've made justice quite the little cottage industry in this burg. The whole city is agog for the Red Panda. The Red Panda, he'll save us. Brilliant. You even keep out the other heroes. Except the dish. <laughs> the whole city, all for you. And that's what makes it perfect. I don't really do autographs. You could send in a box top and join the Panda Patrol, but you're supposed to be at least ten. I am trying to finish a thought here! <laughs> oh, boy. You see, it's perfect. One city, one hero. It's only missing one thing. What's that? One city, one hero, one nemesis. Nemesis. We like ourselves, don't we? Look at the play this has been getting in the papers. Mad monkey terrorizes city. Only the red panda can save us now. Save us, red panda, save us! <laughs> and I will. Of course you will. That's what keeps the machine in tune. Security pays, but it can't live without fear. And all I want is my cut. Your cut. 30% off the top and two weeks vacation a year. What? All right, 25. 25% of what? Your take. Whatever these slavering citizens shell out to support their champion these days. My army and I make headline. We throw the fear of me into the city. You stop us. Everybody's happy and we all get a piece. You don't think that I... All right, 20. I should get at least what the girl gets. Yay! Is this why you pulled those monkey-themed crimes? So we could find you and negotiate your salary? Of course! I can't believe it took you this long! Well, if you didn't keep blowing up the evidence... You can't have a cut, Mad Monkey. There's nothing to have a cut of. This isn't a racket or a scam or a game of any kind. There's no profit to share. What? You're giving this away? And they call me mad! We're helping people, you babbling baboon! That's good, I like that. You've got a lot to learn, Mad Monkey. Like, for example, about the time-release smoke bombs we've been dropping for the last two minutes. What? Oh! Can't see! Find them, you fools! No, squirrel! Throw them out of gas! No! My army! What have you done? <laughs> Where'd he go? He stepped right off that ledge. <laughs> You've won this round, Red Panda, but you'll never catch me now. Flying felons? He's turned that stolen parade balloon into a giant monkey-shaped zeppelin. He's getting away. Go see. If you can be good for good's sake, then I can be evil for evil. You haven't heard the last of a bad monkey. Come on, Squirrel. He won't get far. Did I forget to mention the 36 coconut bombs over the museum's Egyptian wing? You've got to defuse them in sequence or... Kaboom! <laughs> you take the bombs. I'll get him. Squirrel, no. We only have a short time to truss up these baboons before the knockout gas wears off. So the mad monkey gets away? This time, Squirrel. This time. <laughs> and so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! Thank you.
The Red Panda Adventures, episode 20, Monkey Shines, was written and directed by Greg Taylor and featured the vocal talents of Brian Vaughn, Gregory Z. Cook, Kevin Robinson, Michael Booth, Stephen Burley, Monica Cote, Christopher Mott, Clarissa Denetter-Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>